I'm a biologist. Mm -hmm. I understand the biology. Are you saying that a woman is only a person who has two X chromosomes and a man who is someone who only has an X and a Y chromosome? I think that's the scientific definition. Yes. It's actually not. Have you ever heard of gynecomastia? I had it. And if, okay, so did you have that fixed? Yes, I did. And did that make you feel affirmed in your gender and comfortable in your body? No, when I was in the Navy, nobody knows this, by the way. Welcome back, everybody. In this particular video, we're going to cover a rather controversial topic of transgenderism. So we're going to play this out. Then I'm going to give a little bit of commentary. What do Christians often get wrong in terms of our understanding around this issue? With that being said, let's dive in. What do you have to say for people who don't fit in your definition of man or woman? I'm a biologist. Mm -hmm. I understand the biology. Are you saying that a woman is only a person who has two X chromosomes and a man who is someone who only has an X and a Y chromosome? I think that's the scientific definition. Yes. It's actually not because there can be people with XXY. There can be Y chromosome Mm -hmm. inactivation. The way that this biology works Mm -hmm. is that you have genes. Those Mm -hmm. genes make proteins. Those proteins develop the traits that you define as men and women. They develop the features that you define as male, they develop the genitalia, Mm -hmm. but you can be a woman with female genitalia and be XY. You can be a man, but you could, you can have XX chromosomes. Yeah, I understand what you're talking about, Grace. You're talking about a very rare condition known as intersexed. One in 100 people experience chromosomal differences in sex. Okay, but not one in 100 have different genitalia or ambiguous genitalia. And what do you say to those people? Well, what you say is that's a situation that is not the norm. We're not saying that they're not people, obviously. As I understand it, maybe you know more about it than me. Uh, when you do have a truly intersexed person, at, at that point, either the parents or when they're old enough, they can decide which way they're going to orient themselves and they can get the appropriate surgery. But that's not what we're experiencing so you're in our culture. It's okay for people to decide their gender. In that situation, but that's not what we're talking about in our culture. What we're talking about in our culture are people with perfectly normal functioning sexual organs trying to have them removed and trying to transition to another gender, which is impossible scientifically. Have you ever doubted that you're a man? Mm-hmm. You've doubted that you... Oh, have I ever doubted I'm a man? No, I have never doubted I'm a man. Then what do you say to a transgender person who has never doubted their gender? You're saying that we all change and that obviously transgenderism is a product of some kind of phase, but you've never doubted that you're a man. No, I'm... Where's your development of this change? Grace, I'm not denying there are people truly with gender dysphoria. I've already said that. What I'm saying is, is the way out of that problem is not surgery according to the data. Okay. Psychiatry is the way out of that. I also don't agree with your statement that after surgery, you implied that transgender people are more likely to commit suicide after surgery. But the statistics say that transgender people are more likely to commit suicide because of people like, because of arguments that you make that they're invalid. No, I'm not saying they're invalid. I'm just saying that you implied that it's the surgery that's causing suicide. No, it's not. Uh, What I'm I'm saying saying is the surgery doesn't fix anything. That's the point. The same, it's practically the same rate, whether they have the surgery or not. If you woke up and grew breasts today, would you would like them to be removed? There are many. Say that again. Have you ever heard of gynecomastia? I had it. And if, okay, so did you have that fixed? Yes, I did. And did that make you feel affirmed in your gender and comfortable in your body? No, when I was in the Navy, nobody knows this, by the way. (laughs) Now I'm revealing my, I need a HIPAA form to sign here or something. You don't have to talk about it. No, what what I'm saying is, yes, I've had that myself and, and, and had it surgically removed when I was in the Navy. Yeah. And do you feel more comfortable in your body and more affirmed in your gender because of that? Well, it wasn't a gender thing for me. It was the fact, well, I can't even get into it now because it had nothing to do with my gender. Okay. So it, 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 it had to do with a, it had to do with the fact that it looked really odd. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. Okay. But Grace, my point is, is if we truly care about people, are we going to try and force them down a road, particularly as children, into a solution to a problem which is proven not to be a solution. You just said that having that surgery made you feel better about yourself. That, um, that has nothing to do with transgender I surgery. Think, I, I, wasn't, think, I wasn't changing my sex. 
I was having breast tissue removed. Okay. I, I was always a man. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. And say that I have XY chromosomes, but I'm born with female genitalia and female body types, but I believe I'm a man. Should I not be allowed to have that breast tissue well, removed? As an adult, you can do whatever you want. Yes, that's M fine. My problem is with the children. That's, that's, where, that's where I'm having a real problem. Is there a I, magic button at 18 that instantly makes you feel like you know who you are and absolutely what your gender is? I don't no, well, that's... I think for women, it's probably like 15. For men, it's 37. <laughs> to be honest with you, okay? Because men don't develop as quickly as women, all right? But no, no we've just chosen 18 kind of as the, the adulthood crossing point, although for some issues it's 21, like drinking, okay? So, no, maybe it's later than 18, okay? My big problem, and I would say this to somebody who's 37, that the surgery does not appear to help anyone. And if you want more data on this, you can go to sexchangeregret.com, sexchangeregret.com. But I wouldn't even be talking about this issue unless I thought the current way the culture is going is hurting people. And it is. Why, why would I bring all this abuse on myself? Yeah, I really respect Frank for actually going there and admitting this, you know, medical reality that he had to deal with. I think that that goes a long way just to be transparent and vulnerable and honest in that way. Now, one thing that I think is really interesting here is I'm assuming that this student is an atheist, given that 99% of the people who go to these Frank Turk Q&As are. What I was thinking about as I was watching this is from an atheistic, materialistic viewpoint, what is transgenderism? Doesn't it imply a mind and a body or a soul and a body? Or when you talk about gender and biology, aren't you talking about two separate things where within materialism, isn't that all just one thing? Aren't you just a body? Aren't your thoughts just chemicals in your brain? Then second, I was thinking about if there's a disparity between soul and body or mind and body, which one should be crafted or shaped to be in harmony with the other. One last thing I want to say just to wrap this video up is that I just would encourage you, rather than just getting triggered and saying, no, you're implying a moral standard, or no, you're saying that God has something to do with my sexuality, I would say yes, he does, but in a way that is for your good, in a way that is for my good. God is in the business of restoring and redeeming and purifying humanity. And so the fact that God has some preferences and standards doesn't mean that he's a dr draconian dictator trying to take anyone away from the good. Rather, he is pulling people out of prisons and into freedom, out of deceptions and into truth, out of illusions and into reality. He has all intel and he knows what is best for us and he knows what creates human flourishing. So when anyone, including myself, submits ourselves under God's way and actually lives out of God's rule, we experience peace, joy, and love, as opposed to disintegration, depression, and all of the things that come within this disparity between mind and body. So with that being said, I hope that there's some things to chew on here, at least in this video. Really appreciate you guys watching as always, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.